When Hideo Nakata's ring was released on January 31st, 1998, it wasn't expected to be any sort of smash hit. Sure, Toho, the production studio in charge, hoped to make their money back and then some. But, you would be forgiven for thinking they didn't intend for Ring to spawn several decades of sequels, and international influence unparalleled by perhaps any other Japanese live-action property of the time. The main reason we say this is that Ring actually had a sequel right out of the box, which by comparison floundered at the box office. And only once Ring catapulted into the limelight did Toho cut ties with the sequel and replace it wholesale. We say that this original sequel, Spiral, was more or less baked into the release of Ring. That's right, Ring and Spiral were dropped into theaters on the exact same day, January 31st, 1998. Given this, it's understandable that the second film saw a different crew and a sort of tangential cast. The film was written and directed by George Ida, a horror, comedy, and sci-fi director who had been working for almost a decade at this point. He had worked in theatrical film, television, and even video games, writing the 1995 3DO title Ida Joji Nightmare Interactive Moon Cradle. Reportedly, Spiral follows the second ring novel by Koji Suzuki closer than the later replacement sequel, but we'll get to that in another video. Let's just say for the purposes of this video that Spiral is… odd. As we mentioned in the previous video, the first film was brought over to America in 2003 following the success of the American Ring film. Hideo Nakata's project was dumped directly onto DVD, finding a cult following in cult horror circles. Spiral and the other two Ring films we'll be discussing this week came over in 2005, with Spiral bearing its Japanese title Rasen in this case. Zach Thompson, writing for Vice in 2017, argued that the advent of the torture porn genre arriving in 2004 with films like Saw pushed J-horror out of the limelight, while Nicholas Rucka on Midnight Eye argued that what we would call J-horror was dead in Japan by the time it came to America, Thompson claims that by 2005, J-horror was dead in the water in the US as well. This might explain the reason that these three later Ring films were dumped so unceremoniously and the American Ring 2 floundered upon its theatrical release in 2005. Though, if review scores have anything to say about it, it also could have just been a bad movie. While Spiral may have been abandoned one year later in 1999, more than a decade into the new millennium, it was actually given a proper follow-up. In other words, 2012's Sadako 3D and 2013's Sadako 3D 2 effectively turned Spiral into the base of a fork within the Ring timeline. Sadako 3D from 2012 ought not to be confused, however, with Sadako from 2019, itself falling into the other fork of the Ring timeline, though all of that is a collection of stories for another day. Getting back to 1998's Spiral, as we said, this one's a bit weird. The film follows a coroner, Mitsuo Ando, who examines the body of Ryuji Takeyama. Not long after this encounter, Reiko and Yoichi both wind up dead as well. Ando, due to his earlier connection with Ryuji and his family, finds himself drawn into the mystery of Sadako's cursed video. Shortly, he views the tape and finds himself pursued. Ando begins to do his own detective work, finding that everyone but Reiko seems to have died of the tape. He's handed Reiko's diary following her demise, and begins to peruse it for clues. Through his investigation, Ando encounters Mai Takano, a former student of Ryuji's. Mai and Ando feed off one another, helping to bolster their personal goals. Unfortunately for Ando, it turns out that Mai is just Sadako in disguise. She's used Reiko's diary to further spread her infection, and has been able to extend her life by having sex with Ando. The film ends with Mai resurrecting Ryuji Takayama and Ando's lost son. She does this in exchange for Ando's assistance with spreading her influence further. The newly reborn Ryuji even laughs at this, telling Ando that he's essentially sold out the entire world to get his own son back. The film concludes with further shade on Ryuji's part. Ando questions if Ryuji will have Mai bring back Yoichi, to which Ryuji responds that he wouldn't be so cruel as to bring a child back into this world.
All of that being said, there are still a few things we can discern about Spiral. One person's search for purpose, and the manipulation that can arise from it. The parallels present in the cyclical nature of Sadako's infection, and how quirky this story is compared with its predecessor. First, we have Ando's personal search for purpose and meaning. Initially, he wants to understand Ryuji Takuyama's death, given that they knew one another. This leads in turn to Ando wanting to understand Reiko's death, given that it didn't seem to originate from the tapes, as in all other cases. Lastly, this journey segues into Ando attempting to understand what's going on with Mai, which leads, at the film's conclusion, to the promise of a new beginning for Ando, his son, Ryuji, and even Sadako. This journey seems lengthy and convoluted, but the important element to consider is that the entire procession is spurred on by Ando's loss of his son. In simplest terms, he's driven by selfish desires, not a sense of altruism. At the climax of the film, we find out that Ando has been manipulated the whole time. First, he was drawn in by Takayama's personal connection and his untimely death. Next, he was drawn in by a reporter handing him Reiko's diary after her death oh so conveniently. Concurrently, Ando sees visions of his son's demise. Toward the end, Ando is egged on with sex not born from love, but from a fear of death. All of these incitements are used to place Ando in a position where he will consider publishing Reiko's diary as a novel, thus infecting more people. We learn that this will work thanks to what the film calls optical memory. We see this in practice with the ring virus even passing into new victims via the eyepieces on a microscope. The theory here being that anyone who reads the diary is up for infection. These two elements, Ando's search for purpose and the manipulation he experiences along the way, demonstrate how vulnerable those in search of something greater can be. Sadako, in this sense, is something of a predator, and Ando a prey item. Though she doesn't simply kill and consume him, instead, she provides him an opportunity to live the life he wants, reunited with his child and his old friend in exchange for Ando helping to pass on her infection. Perhaps this relationship between Sadako and Ando is not solely based on his vulnerability, however. As it turns out, Ando is shown to parallel Sadako's father in one key way. In flashback, we hear that Sadako's dad wishes she had never been born. This is due to what Sadako became in terms of her supernatural powers, with her father seeing her as a monster and an aberration. Ando, meanwhile, states that he regrets having passed on his DNA. This statement is implied to be due to his son's death, rather than any qualities Ando disliked about his son. These types of parallels and cyclical elements all point to a deeper meaning behind Spiral, a meaning that was, unfortunately, largely lost due to the film's lack of success. Said lack of success could have been due to the untimely release of Spiral. After all, does releasing two films on the same day drive ticket sales to the sequel, or discourage folks from coming back for part two? Would it be better to defer the sequel for a few months and build hype and word of mouth around the first film before dropping the second? On the other hand, one could point the finger at the gulf of difference between the tone and style in Ring and Spiral. In this regard, Spiral is notably more sci-fi than horror. Of course, the mystery and horror elements that stood as hallmarks of Ring are present here, but Spiral sways further into the realms of speculative fiction and existential terror, all with a veneer of science. Certain elements stand out here, such as the diary, the multiple late-game resurrections, Sadako's own reincarnation, and the minutia of how the virus manipulates optical memory. In much the same way that midichlorians being brought into the Star Wars universe perhaps over-explained the origins of the Force, some of Spiral's elements break the lore of the universe in some ways rather than necessarily building upon them. What we're getting at here is that the film is way weirder than it is scary, with less tension and more existential horror. Spiral may have been left behind for a time with the release of further Ring films, but it set one notable precedent. What Spiral dared to do was break the mold established by Ring giving the project its own identity, not directly reliant upon its ancestor. Stay tuned, as next time we'll be delving into what this branching pathway structure and the unique identity of each film meant for the other direct sequel to Ring, released just one year after these first two films.